folks fixed. Uh, my favorite Broadcom one is the Cisco DPC 3010. Works pretty well. The Thompson, piece of shit, but you know, it's an option. Um, the DCM is Doxis. The TCM is Euro Doxis. Let's see. Oh, and yeah, um, you know, uh, Ecos, MIPS, you got to have somebody who's, uh, Ryko codes everything in assembler. He plans on, um, you know, doing hacks aware. But the, uh, the Puma 5, I think, is going to be the, uh, the big popular thing since anybody can develop for it who, you know, is a Linux developer. Uh, as far as American Doxis 3 offerings, Comcast has the most D3 offered in America. You know, competitor to Fios and um, other fiber to the whatever services. Uh, Comcast, you know, for 100 bucks a month or 80 bucks a month, you get 50 megs down, 10 megs up. There's a 100 meg down, 10 meg up business package, and it's about $300 a month. Um, if you hack your 6120, you can pull 120 megs down and 15 megs up. Uh, you can. I'm not saying you should do that. Um, Charter. Um, yeah, I don't wear a Comcast shirt. I don't have Comcast. It's just more for the irony. Um, Charter has a 60 meg package, uh, 175 meg coming soon. Uh, Cablevision up in New England, they have a, they claim the fastest uh, internet in America, 100 and what, 101 megs down for 99 bucks a month. It's pretty cool. Um, Time Warner, Roadrunner, they are very slow in deploying Doxus 3 right now. They've hit New York City, um, I think Dallas, but they are dragging their heels. So if you've got Time Warner, I feel sorry for you. I actually, I, I have Charter. I just got Doxus 3 about a month ago, and I love it. Uh, it's great. And then, oh, in Europe, um, some of those companies are already offering the eight channel bonded downstreams. There's not that in the USA yet. Uh, one of my friends in Norway pulls about 170 megs down uh, with a 6120. Uh, it's pretty sick. <laughs> And the potential, uh, it's a, a potential with eight, eight channels bonded downstream is about 400 megabits. Yeah. Um, packet cable. They, um, they really want me to talk more about this than I should. Um, just as a proof of concept, packet cable is, it, anyone have cable phone service, Comcast Digital Voice? It, that, that's run on packet cable, which uh, runs on top of Doxis. Um, Basically, with a permission of, of the phone line owner, I was able to, in a couple of hours, hijack their phone line completely. Uh, no need to clone the MAC address. By simply cloning the, the FQDN, which is the fully qualified domain name, and a couple of pieces of information, you can hijack somebody's phone line who has cable phone service. And uh, that's not something I recommend you do. Uh, I did it just to prove it could be done, and there's a lot of uh, flaws in packet cable. I, I think it's more so. Um, vulnerabilities in the call management servers, not necessarily packet cable, but packet cables like Doxis, there's inherent flaws in it. And, um, you know, basically somebody pisses you off and you know enough information, you can hijack their phone and, you know, use your imaginations on that one. Let's see. I'm going to pass this back to Blake to talk about some of the people who have been arrested uh, since 2008. Um, there you go. <laughs> All, this, uh, all these people getting arrested, actually at the end you'll see a, a very important lesson that is uh, from one of my friends. He's actually in prison right now, unfortunately, <laughs> but over, uh, if anybody heard of the TJ Maxx hacks, uh, Stephen Watt. And so I got a picture from him to, to show you guys, just to push a message to uh, everybody, you know, the hacker community in general. We got uh, Tom Swingler, AK Macedal. He was the first guy that was arrested. I think it was actually like big enough. It ended up being on G4, Hack of the Show or whatever. But uh, He's got a nose job. <laughs> so anyways, that heavy media attention. The, the case ended up being dismissed after six months without any official reason. But what ended up happening is Macedog then snitched on mass mods. So you also had TC and ISO. You guys, uh, Anybody went to our last speech, heard about them, they kind of started a lot of the cable modem hacking in general. That's Ryan Harris, a.k.a. Duringle. He was arrested in October of 2009, generally regarded the godfather of cable modem hacking. How did he get arrested? Snitched on by D-Shocker. He's currently out on bond awaiting trial. So we'll go on to the... Um, Duringle actually literally wrote the book. It's called Hacking the Cable Modem. Um, no Starch Press pr uh, publishes it. They probably have it in the vendor area, but um, literally he, he wrote the book on it. and. Uh, he was the big fish, and they busted him based on a snitch. And we, we believe that he's innocent, but you know, that's sure. my opinion. <laughs> so then you have massmods.com. 
Matthew Dollery, arrested February 2010. He advertised pre-configured pre -configured modems to steal service from Comcast, which is obviously a no-no. You don't say, hey, still Comcast here. But still again, he was raided after being snitched on by Mastodog. He's expected to plead guilty, of course, the way the case is set up. You have a, what's that? Uh, this guy, he's so freaking stupid. He was on YouTube with videos, how to steal from Comcast, how to steal Dish Network with an FTA box. On his forums, he had tutorials on how to get away with murder. Um, he sold lock picks. This guy's just a freaking moron. So he, he's getting what he deserved, but um, yeah, he got snitched on. So that, sure. that's the bottom line. So we had the very small bust in South Florida where theft of services apparently. In, in South Florida, there's a joke that um, trafficking illegal cable modems has taken over uh, popularity in trafficking cocaine. <laughs> So, and the people in the uh, retirement homes down there are sitting there with, you know, chrome rims on their wheelchairs, you know, soldering up modems and shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a couple key things is all the current arrests have involved theft of service, um, you know, selling pre-configured devices that are set up to still service. Except for Duringle, he's innocent. Okay, well, except for Duringle. <laughs> and using modems for legitimate diagnostic purposes is still, by our belief, completely legal. The key factor that I like to, you know, point out is that the majority of rest have been by snitches. So it comes to my next slide, which um, he wants me to send a picture to this, uh, to him in prison. So if anyone <laughs> takes pictures of this can uh, actually email it to me. But that's a brief message from Stephen Watt. He gave a speech at DEF CON 10 with uh, Gobbles and Silvio. And he's a Unix terrorist, but he's basically saying, hey, stop snitching. That's why, you know, half of you guys end up going to jail is, you know, knock each other out. <laughs> if everybody would just not you know, say things half the time they wouldn't even have, you know, sometimes have evidence, but a lot of the times they wouldn't. Now we're going to go ahead and go into the new tools and firmware, which Taco is going to cover that. Ready? Okay. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, bouncing back. Um, okay, we got the, uh, the Motorola 6120 out about a year ago, started playing with it. Um, we went over before I had an orange modem with me, the Motorola factory diagnostic modem um, with the shelled firmware. We had that firmware before the modems even came out. And um, basically, uh, Duringle, uh, the guy from TCN ISO, for a while was working on something called Dream OS, which is going to be a Linux based operating system that could just do anything. It never came to fruition since he got busted. But um, lo and behold, Texas Instruments released uh, their, their reference firmware for all the Puma 5 modems, Monta Vista Linux. And so basically, they gave us Dream OS, uh, a fully capable diagnostic firmware. Um, to consumers, and, and that's very cool. Um, let's see. Uh, we're just, we don't have a name for the firmware yet. Um, nothing cool like hacks or where we're just calling it SBH Alpha. Uh, we're on build 1.1 right now. Um, it's kind of like, you know, DDWRT, OpenWRT, anybody can develop for it. You know, Motorola and all the manufacturers, they've released their source code, but I'm going to say this, and hopefully this is not, you know, slander, but they are all in violation of the GPL because they have not released compilable sources. They have not released the Monte Vista tool chain. Whatever they're releasing can be compiled, but it won't run on the ARM ar architecture. So hopefully maybe someone in this room can help us get Motorola to stop violating the GPL. Anybody? Lawyers? No? I'll talk to EFF. Um, Last time we spoke here, there were about 25,000 users on the SP Hacker Forum. As of today, we have about 69,000, uh, close to 70,000 people on our forum. And um, let's see. Uh, I talked to Ryko. He plans on making Hacksaware 3.0 for their Broadcom modems uh, sometime around the end of this year. So um, those of you who have Hacksaware know that's going to be freaking awesome. Um, and then uh, DOCSIS 2 modems mostly use uh, parallel flash chips and we, mod we use uh, JTAG to flash those. All of the new modems, DOCSIS 3 and whatnot, have SPI flash chips. So we've had to switch over to new programmers that support in SPI and system programming. Uh, there's the USB JTAG NT. It's a proven device. It's very good. Um, Ryko, the guy who did Hacksware, has been working on for mm, six months to a year the Hacksomatic using a FTDI chip, it does JTAG, SPI, and it has a uh, serial port, USB to TTL. It's uh, all in one. I actually have one right here. It's a really small. Um, oh, there's a picture of it there. <laughs> um, and then you can, that works with Tom's JTAG utility, um, the software that Ryko's writing, um, blah, blah, blah. You can build your own um, 
parallel port SPI programmer. But uh, that's for yeah, all the new modems have SPI flash chips basically. Let's see. Uh, the SPH alpha firmware, we really didn't have to do a whole lot to it because Texas Instruments gave us uh, basically everything we need. We just modified some of the scripting so you can force your own config file. Um, disabling firmware updates from your ISP is automatic. If you want to enable it, you can do so. Um, disabling SNMP so they can't pull your modem after it's online. Um, Ryko actually, uh, Ryko's a MIPS guy. He doesn't know ARM, uh, but he actually figured out how to disable BPI plus and BPI. So we're using that for people who choose to do so. Now, if you disable BPI, um, all of your traffic goes over the network unencrypted, and the nature of uh, HFC networks is that your neighbors can sniff your traffic and if it's not encrypted your email passwords and anything not secure is going to be you know s a vulnerable to your neighbors running Wireshark or whatever. Um, um, at DEF CON 16 there's a packet o -matic speech. Guy Martin. Guy Martin. So there actually has a tool to uh, sniff Doxis traffic if anybody's interested you can look that up. Yeah, he gave a speech at the same time we did it at 16 and uh, a lot of uh, Doxis engineers were very concerned after they saw the video of it and they've all started enabling BPI. It took Charter, uh, BPI has been around since 99, it took Charter about 10 years to enable it but um, you know, they were bankrupt so can't blame them. Um, oh, let me see. Um, we have the, uh, one of the checks they use now is um, checking your firmware version. Uh, we have the latest firmware for this. Basically, we're working with Motorola 6120 firmware. The, the latest version is spoofed, so it reports to the cable company you're running the latest firmware version. Um, we're trying to add a feature where you can change it to whatever you want. Like in Hacksaware, you can spoof any modem you want, and it looks like you're running that modem. And um, Right now there's no web GUI like with Hacksaw you can change all the settings. It has to be done via uh, you know a serial port or SSH. There's two reasons for that. One is because Hacksaw invited a lot of morons who don't even know how to run a computer into this community who started stealing service and just trying to ruin the hobby for everybody. Um, so one of the reasons is that the other reason is uh, tool chain issues. Um, like I said, some of those companies are violating the GPL, not releasing the MontaVista tool chain. We only know one person with a uh, working tool chain for the uh, Puma 5, but I'm sure plenty of people in the audience here are, you know, gifted Linux developers and could write their own tool chains. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to set up a demo and show you guys the 6120 shell and uh, the Hacksomatic. And Blake's going to go over a few things. Yeah, well, you guys are doing that. What I was going to say is uh, how many of you guys, maybe show of hands, have heard of DDWRT? or any of that type. So this is the kind of the same thing what's going on with this. Now that you have Linux on your modems, you have a, like a whole you know, world of potential that you could do. So you can port all this stuff to it, run all different types of tools and whatnot. So what SB Hacker is really looking for is to get more people that could you know, build things like what was built into DDWRT to put this onto the modems and really give you a lot of power on your modems and I mean who knows what all. I mean, I don't know uh, if they could handle Snort or, or whatnot, but I remember, you know, there are people using like DDWRT with Snort and things like that. All, so. all the current modems have eight or sixteen meg flash chips and thirty-two or sixty-four megs of RAM, so there's plenty of power there to be used. So that's really, you know, looking for people to get more involved with this project. That's the the new, you know, with the new surfboard hacker firmware, since it does run on Linux. The idea is instead of having just like one guy coding it, like Ryko, actually having a community of people contributing. And helping to develop, uh, develop it. Oh, and this is the Motorola SB6120. This is the most popular uh, Doxis 3 cable modem you can buy it at Fry's, Best Buy, whatever. It's the most popular one. It's really hacked. Blah blah blah. Let's see. I'm going to load up. Uh, oh, this it has a uh, breakout board installed on it. We've got a, um, a USB to serial port, and we've got a, uh, a little port here for flashing the uh, SPI chip. And inside, it's wi the uh, the board is wired directly to the SPI chip. And uh, when we power it on and cut the cable, uh, it cuts the power to the CPU. For those of you who are familiar with SPI programming, uh, so you can program the chip directly, and it's quite a, a bit faster than um, than using JTAG. Is this going to work? Okay, bootloaders decompressing the firmware, starting all the processes. 